We're sitting here with an extraordinary fossil that we've recreated in three dimensions as a sculpture. And this is a fossil that comes from 67 million year old sediments from India. And what it shows us is an example of behavior being captured in the fossil record. We have a snake caught in the act of feeding on dinosaur hatchlings. The fossil that this sculpture is based on was found in western India in 1984 by an Indian scientist named Dhananjay Mahabi. And um, getting the fossil from 1984 to now has been a, a long odyssey that involved a series of discoveries. When it was first found, it was a difficult fossil to interpret. The bones were still covered in, in sediment, and, it, and the person who discovered it, Dhananjay Mahabe, interpreted that we had eggs and we had bones of some animal, and he interpreted that animal to be a dinosaur. In fact, some of the bones were bones of dinosaurs, but some of the other bones were bones of a different animal, and it wasn't recognized um, until I visited the collections of, Don, of Dhananjay Mahabe in 2001. And when I went to his lab, I had asked to see this specimen because I was interested in seeing this dinosaur hatchling with the eggs. And when I looked at it, I was stunned because I recognized that some of the bones that were interpreted as maybe being dinosaur bones were in fact the bones of a snake. And we could recognize those bones as being snake bones because they have characteristic articulations that lock the bones. So snakes have very twisty bodies, but in fact, they have very little mobility between vertebrae. And a lot of their mobility is because they have a little bit of freedom in between hundreds of vertebrae. So in about 2001, we figured out that this is a really exceptional fossil because snakes are extraordinarily rare during the dinosaur era. We have probably a half dozen snakes that are known with skulls and bodies. We have lots of snakes in other places, but the ones that have skulls and bodies, the ones that are really good specimens, come from a couple of different areas. And so far, none had come from India. So I knew that it was an important fossil, and the fact that this snake was sitting next to dinosaur eggs and perhaps next to dinosaur bones meant that there was perhaps something else that we could find from this fossil. So that began kind of a long odyssey from 2001 till here we are in 2010 where Don and Jay and I worked together. I immediately told him that I thought it was a snake and it was important, and he said, let's do something with it. He'd been sort of waiting for someone to take interest in the specimen. We spent probably three or four years getting permission from the government of India to borrow the specimen. And we got permission. We brought that spe this specimen to the University of Michigan where it was cleaned painstakingly over the course of a year with needles taking grain by grain off of the specimen. And when the specimen was clean, it revealed an extraordinary fossil that I had no idea was going to be uh, underneath some of the sediment. So we found a skull. We found a body of a snake that was coiled. So the skull was sitting on top of the coil, and inside the coil of the snake was a set of fragmented eggshells that you see here. And as it turns out, there are two other eggs, this one and this one, from the same site that were intact. So they weren't crushed at all. And so something must have crushed this egg. And we later learned, uh, on the basis of the presence of a hatchling that we saw right next to it, that this was probably an egg that was recently hatched. And it's crushed because the animal that left the egg, uh, left the egg fragmented. And the snake probably was attracted to um, this egg that was moving and the hatchling that was coming out of it. And the moment we see captured here in the sculpture is the moment prior to, pres to preservation in the fossil record. So it's the moment right before a big plug of wet sediment would have covered this up and frozen this instant in time for the rest of us to enjoy in the uh, 21st century. The fossils of Sanaja and the sauropod and the eggs are now in India. We had a short-term agreement to bring them here to clean them, and then we returned them. And so they're now in India in perpetuity in a collection, so anybody who wants to study them can study them. But we have research casts here that um, allow anybody who doesn't have the, the facility to go to India to study um, a pretty good cast of the specimen here at Michigan. And so it's really an incredibly rewarding fossil, and it's even more rewarding because of how long it took to find it and to, um, to actually describe it. And so I'm happy that at the end of 10 years for me and 30 years for Don and Jay, this fossil has finally been described and will be uh, get the the kind of notoriety and future study that it deserves.